And now let's hear it from the young surgeon perspective. We have none other than less a young surgeon with us, Dr. Supriya Sri Ganesh. Congratulations to Dr. Sri Ganesh and Supriya for being with us and thank you so much. So thank let's so hear much, from sir. a young dynamic surgeon what she has to say. Thank you so much, sir. So uh, good afternoon to all my teachers, my colleagues and friends. Uh, I'm Dr. Supriya Sri Ganesh and uh, today I'll be talking to you about how to start your ICL practice. I've only been uh, implanting ICLs for a few months now and I'm going to tell you um, what sort of setup you require to begin implanting ICLs from my perspective. So why begin um, your ICL practice? Her slides are not moving. Can somebody help her? In the meantime, she sets up her PowerPoint. I want to add two, three pearls. Uh, why make a marking, uh, Dr. Sanjay, once we are doing totally a digital alignment of uh, Thorica ICL? And uh, another pearl, just uh, let me come in. Okay, all right. Yes, Let's Supriya, all to you. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's working. So to begin your ICL practice, you don't need to purchase a lot of special uh, specialized equipment for the same. Uh, it's a low investment refractive surgery. It's reversible. The cornea remains untouched. Uh, there's a quick learning curve for anterior segment surgeons who are already doing FACO. And uh, that post-op day, uh, one wow factor is unbelievable because the corneal abrasions are not much. The recovery is very quick. And it's ideal in patients who are unsuitable for keratorefractive procedures. And uh, that post-op day one factor that I was talking about, that wow factor, is added to by the higher effective optical zone. And in high myopes, it reduces the minification. So initially, how do I select my initial patients? Uh, the refraction should be stable for at least a year. The ACD should be greater than 2.8, ideally greater than uh, 3 mm uh, from the corneal endothelium to the lens. Um, it corrects up to minus 19 to minus 20 diopters of myopia and 4 diopters of astigmatism and uh, 9 to 10 diopters of hyperopia. Uh, you need a round pupil, open angle of, an, uh, of the anterior chamber, a clear lens, a normal IOP, no other ocular, ocular pathology and uh, no previous ocular surgery. So for beginners, uh, this is a good way to start off. Of course, there are much more complex scenarios like uh, Dr. Ramurthy elaborated uh, that we can implant ICLs, but for a beginner, we would start with the simple cases. So what equipment do you need to begin the practice? So your very basics, such as your slit lamp, your indirect ophthalmoscope, your 78 to 90D lenses, tonometer, every patient needs to undergo gonioscopy, uh, retinoscopy, a very good retinoscopy, both subjective, objective, objective and dilated refraction, a pupillometer and uh, an ultrasound biometer with a pachymeter is enough, uh, the auto refractometer and keratometer, a digital caliper and a topographer. So in among all of these instruments, um, your normal cataract practice would have everything except probably your digital caliper, your topographer and your pupillometer. Uh, but is a topographer really required? Um, like Dr. Sudarshan elaborated, the digital, the digital caliper is one of the most simple and accurate uh, methods of uh, measurement of your white to white. Uh, the topographer basically confirms that measurement and also every refractive practice requires a topographer and it's also very helpful in ruling out your keratoconus cases. So um, 
again your op scan is a very good topographer to actually measure the white to white it has one of the most accurate measurements but um, in some cases it can give you a wrong measurement so there's a tool called the eye metrics tool uh, where you can manually correct and measure the white to white so it gives you a correct value now in an ideal setting where you can have anything you need what are the additional equipment that you may consider purchasing for your icl so we have the ms39 which gives you a very high resol resolution anterior segment oct um, along with topography you have your ubm which was sp spoken about which gives you um, your sulcus to sulcus and it also gives you the um, um, simulation of how the icl would look um, in your sulcus to sulcus which helps you with your measurements your asoct which again measures um, your lens rise and angle to angle measurements um, pentacam of course for topography again pentacam may slightly overestimate the white to white um, specular micro uh, microscope for the endothelial counts in very young patients you need to make sure that the endothelial counts are 3000 to 3500 and uh, your minimum should be about 2000 um, the IL Master 700 again is is for your biometry, your axial length, your anterior chamber depth. But IL Master 700 also is known to overestimate the white to white, and your eye trace uh, for the aberrations. Um, again, like Dr. Ramuthi explained about uh, in a, in highly aberrated eyes, it may not be a good idea to go ahead with the ICL. So just to rule out. Um, highly aberrated eyes where you would rather do a wavefront guided LASIK and also for post-operative patients where you want to rotate your ICL it, it can be useful. So in our center we have uh, this form where we uh, take all the measurements so as you can see on the left hand side you have your ACD where three measurements are, are taken three measurements of the white to white are taken both for the right and the left eye and um, and the eye metrics tool on the op scan is used for the white to white measurements your k1 k2 has to be entered your corneal thickness and your refraction for both the right and left eye and um, here you can see some of the values c1 c2 c3 this is actually obtained from your ubm which i'll come to a little later and then your anterior chamber angle and lens rise is also mentioned in every sheet in our workup so this is a small video just showing you how um, our patients are worked up in our center. This is the um, auto ref which is done which can also measure the white to white. The refraction, nothing uh, beats your retinoscope but it's just confirmed uh, by this uh, refractive surgery setup. This is your pentacam. Three continuous readings are taken uh, from the pentacam. And uh, the, the white to white is of course again correlated with your op scan and your calipers. Then the patient undergoes MS39 after the pentacam, mainly the ASOCT on the MS39 and the tear film analysis um, helps us in such patients. Then the optometrist actually give, measures the, um, the sulcus to sulcus uh, measurements and the lens rise um, on the ASOCT and then we do the UBM um, with the anesthetic, the shell and the UBM is done. And uh, after doing the UBM, it takes multiple readings and uh, the white to white is measured using dis digital calipers. This is the simulation. So, so coming to how to choose your ICL. So the STAR ICL has an online um, software where you have to enter all the patient details. On the left side, you can see all the patient details, including white to white, um, the corneal thickness, anterior chamber depth, K1, K2, etc., which is all entered on the left side here. And it gives you um, the options for your ICL, including the um, expected spherical equivalent, where you can decide uh, the options for your ICL. And also, um, based on the simulated, um, both the ACD, your lens rise, your white to white, your simula simulated uh, ICL uh, from your UBM, if you want a different length requested, then you can actually choose that different length and cu uh, customize it. So this is what I was talking about, C1, C2, C3. This is your UBM display. So basically what this machine does is the software, um, it actually simu simulates for each size of ICL. So on the left side, you can see there are four sizes of the ICL, which was again spoken about earlier. For each size, um, how much C2 is the uh, central vault and C3 is the mid peripheral vault, which is actually most imp mo more important than your central vault. So it actually tells you how much your uh, vault will be for these particular sizes. So this can help you make the decision regarding your ICL sizing. But of course, this doesn't take, take into consideration your lens rise. Um, so again, they, they have an inventory from which you can uh, choose your ICL. 
and uh, finally you get this implantation orientation diagram which was explained by Dr. Tithyal beautifully. Um, here we can rotate the lens either counterclockwise or uh, clockwise and uh, the maximum you can you should rotate the lens it should be within 22 degrees. So uh, speaking a little bit about the ICL itself, uh, it's available in these powers and it has um, the thickness of the, um, the center optic is just 50 microns. So for uh, surgeons who um, start off after doing cataract surgery, that mindset of um, manipulation only in the center needs to be changed to manipulation only in the periphery because the central optic is uh, very thin and can be damaged. And in the V4C model, you have a 360 micron center, the KS um, central hole, the KS aqua port. So, coming to what surgical setup do you need? Uh, limbal marking systems were again spoken about. Uh, the um, markers and the, the automated limbal marking systems. And these are the ins uh, extra instruments that you may need for the actual manipulation of the ICL. So, you have the deet stucker, you have the Vukic manipulator, you have the Palicaris olive tip positioner, etc. In our setup, we use uh, something called the Ganesh ICL manipulator, which was designed by Dr. Sri Ganesh. Um, this is actually a, a visco cannula, which has a manipulator at the end. So, as you're injecting viscoelastic, you can manipulate the ICL with the same instrument. So, there is much less instrumentation in the anterior chamber and the same instrument can be used in a single main wound and the side ports are, don't even have to be made. So uh, the other instruments, the, the foam tip applicator, the importance cannot be stressed um, enough. Uh, it has to be well hydrated to avoid overriding of the applicator and uh, the injectors are required and the pull through forceps or the alligator forceps. So this was, this is just a, another video of loading of ICL. Um, you have to inject normal saline and vis uh, uh, viscoelastic after which the ICL is uh, taken out through the foam tip applicator and placed within the grooves of the cartridge using the foam tip applicator in a convex fashion. It's then the pull through forceps uh, is then used to grasp the edge of the um, ICL and the cartridge is pulled back rather than moving, uh, uh, pulling the uh, ICL forward. Uh, this is a cartridge into which the foam tip applicator is then placed and locked into position. You can actually he uh, hear and feel a click and uh, the ICL is loaded, the cartridge. So this is a technique by which just a single 2.8 and an incision is made and the ICL is injected via that. Uh, no other side ports are made in this method. Uh, but for beginners, of course, a uh, 3.2 mm incision is ideal with two side ports. Um, then the ICL is tucked into position. So what do you see post-op? So in your post-op picture, it's very, very important to compare uh, your wall size to your corneal thickness. It should be half uh, between one half to one and a half times your uh, corneal thickness. So this is what a normal post-op eye looks like. And this is what... Um, your high vault and your low vault looks like. On the left side, you can see the distance between the the um, lens and the ICL is very large. And on the right side, you can see a very shallow vault. So, Priya, I would request you to just summarize. Please. Yes, I'm just ending with uh, this one tricky situation that, the, that we may face of the ICL getting injected uh, wrongly. So here it's, it's uh, flipped over inside the um, anterior chamber. It's actually injected in the wrong orientation. So in this uh, scenario, it's very tempting to try to flip the ICL in the AC, uh, but then never do that. Uh, in, enlarge your incision, make it a trapezoid incision. And with your pull through forceps, you can uh, go in, grasp the ICL uh, in the center and with a twisting, uh, pulling motion, just uh, gently explant it. And then the same ICL can be reloaded and injected in the correct position. I'm just gonna skip ahead. It's the same ICL is injected in the correct position. And so we end the case here. And uh, I'm almost done. So just uh, take home message. Uh, ICL is a great way to begin your refractive pl uh, practice with very uh, low investment. Start with the essentials and go from there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Supriya.